morning, everyone. I come to bring you greetings on behalf of Pastor and the Antioch Baptist Church family. If there's anyone today that is in the audience who is here visiting for the first time, we ask that you stand that we may acknowledge you. Amen. <laughs> We welcome you once, we welcome you twice, we welcome you three times in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I'm so glad to have my own brother and friend for the last at least 25 years. We worked <laughs> together closely as officers together at the Essex County Correctional Facility, and Brother Davis has always been a mentor to me, um, guiding me through not only the job, but he also guided me in the spirit. And we um, just have been worshiping together and fellowshipping as family and friends for just such a long time. Um, he surprised me this day, and he came and he showed up. And I'm just so glad that you are here this morning. And, so, and thank you uh, for, for doing our invocation prayer this morning. So we're glad to have you in the service. Just let the Spirit lead you and guide you to uh, worship him freely today. Um, and for anyone who is online today, we also ask that you just enjoy and worship the Spirit. And if you are moved by the Lord to come and to join not only this church, but the church of God yeah. greater. So if you want to know more about um, our church here at Antioch, you can go to Antioch640.org and you can find out all of the information you need. And we are so welcoming and we want to invite you again into this service today. But I wouldn't be remiss if I didn't ask if there was anyone who was celebrating a special event, like a birthday or anniversary, birth. <laughs> <laughs> well, I will have to say my birthday was Thursday. <laughs> so, I, I'm 25, actually, flip that around, I'm 52. But um, thanks be to God for keeping me all these years. Um, I know also that it is Deacon Taylor's. His birthday was this month as well. Yes. He's been away, so we just want to give him um, a shout and praise for uh, you know just just uh, just growing older. Amen. It's a blessing, man. It's a crown of our glory from our Lord. Yes. So um, thank you again, and um, we have uh, Deacon. Excuse me. <laughs> Evangelist Thomasina Savage in the house of yeah. We're so glad to have her. Reverend Crystal Boulware has graced us as well. So we just want to welcome you all to the service and everyone that's here. So just sit back and enjoy and let's get into the spirit of the Lord this morning. God bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord that God always has a plan. It may not be what we expect, but God always has a plan. Thank you. Thank you again, my brother. That was a blessing. Our scripture this morning can be found in the book of uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and we'll be reading uh, through, uh, actually through chapter 11, so we'll be reading verse 10, uh, chapter 10, verse 31 through 11, 1. And if you would just please stand in reverence to his holy word. Hallelujah. And I'll be reading from a New King James Version as well, in case your interpretation sounds a little bit different. And this is the word of the Lord. Therefore, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. Give no offense either to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Just as I also my, just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. Imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. And that is the word of the Lord this morning. Our hymn of praise can be found on page 141 of your hymnal. And it's love lifted me. And we'll be singing all three verses. Praise the Lord.
we're forever grateful. Let's go before our Heavenly Father. Father, we thank you that you loved us, Lord, when we were unlovable, Lord. Lord, you love us, Lord, when we are still sometimes unlovable, Lord, when we don't listen to what you tell us, Lord, when we don't do what you ask us to do, Lord, even when it's in our own best interest, Lord, when everything that you tell us to do is in our own best interest, Lord. But we thank you that you still love us, Lord, unconditionally, Lord. And we just ask that you would just instill in us that we would do the same, Lord, that we would love those, Lord, that are, uh, that are even our enemies, Lord, as you loved us, Lord that we would just be a reflection of you, Lord, as your Holy Spirit is dwells within us, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us, Lord. But again, Lord, we didn't deserve, Lord, we don't do anything to deserve your love, Lord, Lord. But we thank you that you still love us in spite of ourselves, Lord. And Lord, that you still, Lord, are working on us, Lord, that you're still sanctifying us, Lord. And you're still reaching out today, Lord, to those that do not know you, Lord. So we ask that you would move on them even now, Lord, that you would introduce yourself to somebody today, Lord. That you would uh, just, Lord, touch them, Lord, and just, just, just gnaw out them, Lord, just touch them, Lord, and, and Lord, until they, Lord, they just have to yield to you, Lord, that they would know, Lord, that you are a true and living God, Lord, that they would know, like we know, Lord, who you are, Lord, that you are a loving Father, Lord. Again, that everything you do is has our best interest in mind, Lord, and everything that you do is for our best interest, Lord. We thank you for that, Lord. Teach us to trust you in all things, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the testimony.
September 30th at 7 o'clock. And we are going to hook up the prayer line um, so you'll be able to listen on the prayer line to the prayer. And we're going to come out. We're going to be in the back parking lot. Uh, and we're going to pray. 
from 7 to 7.30. Uh, so far, we, I'm, I'm going to try to get different people, and we're going to, so that you don't have to hear me uh, uh, praying for a half hour, which I could, but I don't want to. <laughs> I'm thinking we all in this together. Amen. Amen. It's not a one-man show, and I refuse to let it be a one-man show. So I bring myself back in. But we're going to pray for a half, we're going to pray from 7 to 7.30, and then we're going to uh, watch the movie. So we're going to have some popcorn for you, some hot dogs, no hamburgers. Uh, we're going to have some sodas, and that'd be good. All right? So bring your blanket. You're going to need a blanket because this might be chilly out there. Don't worry about it. Bring a blanket. I have set out at movie nights uh, underneath the blanket. Bring your lawn chair. And just come and let's just try to get back together. Amen? Amen. 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 I love you very dear.
let's go to the word of God real brief. We, 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 we were blessed to hear uh, Deacon Walker, he read for us the Amen. New King James Version of 1 Corinthians 10 through 11, 1, 10, um, 31 through 11, 1. But let me just read it. Um, I think this is the King James, but I'm not sure, but we'll see. It's, yeah, it's, King. it's, it's still, still the word of God. It's not really that different, but, it's, but sometimes words mean things. Mm -hmm. And actually, this can't be the King James because it says imitate. I'll, I'll explain it to you when I'm following in a second. Let me read it for you. Whether therefore you eat or drink or whatever you, you do. Now, he had already spoken about this earlier in, in the 10th chapter of people eating and, and, you know, everybody has problems with, well, should we eat with them? And they do this and do that. And he's like, oh, man, y'all, y'all coming up with all these rules and regulations. I don't know, we all coming up with it. And, and there was a lot of schisms in this particular um, area, this uh, in Corinth. And the, and the Christians that were living and worshiping in Corinth at the time, they had a lot of stuff going on. They had a lot of issues. And they were trying to mix, you know, their religious beliefs from everywhere and their, the ideologies and what their grandma did versus what they, so Paul was like, Paul was so confused with them. Like, he was so finished with them, actually. <laughs> oh my God, we got to second Corinthians. He just told them straight off. <laughs> I'm gonna tell all of y'all. Yeah, it's nothing wrong with y'all. But in this particular, he tried to be as diplomatic as human possible. So he said, listen, let me explain. whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, how about this? Do it all to the glory of God. Is that, that's, all right, let's do that. Don't, and then don't give no offense. Don't do it to offend neither the Jews. Don't, don't, don't offend them if you can help it. Nor the Gentiles or, or the Greeks, as, as, as in your um, Bible says. Nor the church of God. Don't do that. So if the church has some specific rules, if the Greeks have some certain rules, or if the, the Jews, try as best you can when you're going through whatever process you're going through, right, not to offend any of them. But remember, right, we're doing everything, but to the glory of God. Yeah. So he's just trying to give wonderful fatherly advice. Then he said, even as I have pleased all men in all things, I try to please them in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many that they may be saved. Then here's the key point he said, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. Now in the King James Version, I remember distinctly, King James said, but follow me just as I follow Christ. And I think that's gotten us in so much trouble because we're reading it in today's understanding of that ancient word that he used. And the better manuscripts have imitate me. But what's the difference, Pastor? What's the difference between us imitate or follow? Let me tell you exactly what the difference is. Follow to us connotes that I am leading you. I am. So I said, now can you follow me somewhere in your car, right? You were saying, well, I got to go wherever he go, wherever turn he makes, I'm following him. He is the leader. <laughs> imitate me puts the onus back on you. I'm going to show you what I, you should do, but now it's on you to do the imitating. That's right. I can't imitate for you. You have to imitate. You see that that little nuance makes a big difference. And we have to have an entire organization, an entire uh, Christian them that's that is based upon you following somebody. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. Often there's one scripture where you take that follow this person follow, and so we have this followership mentality of of not of Christ necessarily. But of rules and regulations of, 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 different, of different people. You know, I'm following the bishop. I'm following the apostles. I'm following this. So we're following these people because we said follow them as he followed Christ. When the actual definition did not ever tell you to follow that person. It says imitate me as I imitate Christ. Oh, we're going to talk about that for a second. There is a huge difference in that. And it's a huge responsibility that you have that you cannot advocate. See, if I'm just following you, you lost, but I followed them. <laughs> they said, the Bible told me to follow them. <laughs> no, the Bible told you to imitate Christ. And so, if I'm not imitating Christ, I'm already wrong. Right. Right. If I'm not doing Jesus, then I'm not going to do it. I don't care what else you follow. If you ain't following Jesus, you are dead. Oh, no. Somebody don't like this already. <laughs> Somebody don't like this already. Do you remember back in the day, they had this thing, what would Jesus do? Right. 
I know I do. I have t-shirts in there picking what would Jesus do. That was hot when it came out, man. It, it, everybody, what would Jesus do? And it seemed like a harmless, didn't it? Wonderful statement to make. And it was. Trust me, it was a wonderful advertisement. And at least God's thinking. You're right. In every situation, what would Jesus do? And I'm not going to just go out on my own and doing me. I'm going to think about what would Jesus do? However, over the years, it appears to me that we took that a little bit, like we do with, this, with, with the imitating. We took it a little too far. For, for me to tell you what would Jesus do presumes I know Jesus that well. Because for me to tell you what Jesus would do in that situation, then I have to know how Jesus thinks. I have to know his, uh, how he feels about that situation. I have to understand the nuances of his thought patterns and to understand the depths of his decision making. And so for me to be an expert, you come to tell me, ask me, what would Jesus do? I'm declaring, I know Jesus so good and so per perfectly that I can tell you what Jesus would do in this situation. And I'm telling you guys right now, I don't understand a lot of things Jesus did. I don't understand why when the woman was caught in adultery and came to him, and he, all he said is, no, go and sin no more. I don't understand why he did that. I don't understand why when they asked the question, he was sitting on the ground writing. Uh, there's all kind of stuff, that, all kind of speculations. But why was he doing that? And why did he say he, he without sins cast the first stone? He didn't have sin. He could have cast the stone. I don't understand why he did that. I don't understand why Jesus cried when that Lazarus died only to come later on and raise him anyway. What you crying for? Just, man, I don't understand that. Now, you all might be deeper than me. I'm sure you are. I'm just saying this is stuff I don't understand. That's right. I don't, there's a lot of stuff that Jesus did. Uh, I don't understand why he was walking in the water, act like he's going to pass on the and he didn't see his disciples about to drown. I don't understand why he did that. Guess what? I really don't understand. I don't understand that uh, how he got on the cross. Yes, and he said, Father, uh, you know, uh, forgive them. I go, what? Forgive them? I could said a whole lot of stuff. I don't understand how you are nailing me to a cross. And I'm talking about forgive them, but they don't know what they're doing. They know they they grow. They know exactly what they're doing. So I don't know. So I'm not going to take that. But while I don't understand what Jesus would do, I understand clearly, for the word tells me, what he did. So this morning, for a second, let's just talk about what did Jesus do. For if I don't understand what he would do, I know what he did do. And in terms of imitating someone, I don't need to understand why. I just need to understand what. And so I can imitate you. Matter of fact, there's a wonderful young man who does Denzel imitations. Or I don't know, some of y'all seen it online and all that stuff. I mean, this guy, he, he is spot on. And, and so much so that when he's talking, I'm like, is that Denzel or is that him? His voice is so like Denzel. And, and, and that it sounds so wonderful, uh, like close to it, that I'm like mesmerized. Mm -hmm. But now, he doesn't need to know what town Denzel came from. Right. He don't need to know, you know what Denzel ate for dinner. He don't need to know uh, anything about Denzel. And not only does he have the talk, but he has the mannerism. So when he changes into Denzel, I mean, he makes a metamorphosis from who he is to who Denzel is. He makes this change, and when you see him, you're like, that's Denzel, man. He walked like him, he moved like him. So what he did was not study how Denzel think, he studied how Denzel act. And he, he got it so down to when you see him, you say, that's Denzel. I'm, con I'm convinced that that's him. You got him so so down that I, I'm getting the Denzel vibe from you. And, 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 and the same thing is true of us, people of God. What happens sometimes, we spend so much time trying to figure God out and, and trying to figure the, the deep mysteries of God and the deep things of Christ that we forget that we're not called to understand Jesus. We're not called to comprehend Jesus. We're not called to be, guess what? Uh, you can never understand Jesus. You can never understand God. Have we actually lost our mind to think that we can do it? What we can do is obey him. What we can do is follow him. What we can do is do the things he's asked us to do. Do I, do I know what this is going? So he said there are things in our heart that he's told us to do, and we've got to learn to do them. Whether we understand it or not, 
Very difficult, I know, because we're these people who are so intelligent. We're in 2020, and we have all this intelligence. We have all these things, Google, and all that tells everything. But I guarantee there's nothing on Google, there's nothing on Facebook, there's nothing that can tell you about Jesus and his love. There's nothing that can explain the depth of his love for us. There's nothing that can explain his graciousness. There's nothing that can explain his, his kindness and his love and his joy for us. There's nothing that can tell you about the spirit that he's given you. You can get all the information you want, but you can never get the joy of God until you start to walk like him and start to talk like him until you begin to imitate him and emulate all the things that he's done and when you begin to do that it becomes in your spirit. I got news for you that you can imitate somebody and you don't have to know nothing about them except that they told you to do. You don't have to understand them, a thing about God but all you need to say Lord when the Lord speaks uh, I will listen. Sir whatever you tell me to go I'm going there. I don't know why I'm going. I know how I'm going. Whatever you tell me to say I'm going to open my mouth and say it. Uh, Lord, whatever it is that, that you ask me to pray, I'm going to pray. And sometimes I don't know what I'm praying about. I don't know who I'm praying for. But he says, fall on your knees in the midnight hour and begin to pray. And that prayer you brought up begins to bless somebody that you don't even know. You don't know why it came over your spirit. But if you just be obedient, oh my God. If we can just learn to be obedient to God's voice, nobody else's voice. We don't need to follow anybody else, but we follow Jesus. And we know what we follow by imitating who he is. And what he's done. Has God done anything for anybody? I know this is God. I want to. I just want to read this uh, a note I made, and then uh, just explain it in case you didn't uh, get to this email, which I do send out by the way, so y'all y'all can all get it. <laughs> uh, uh, the key to imitation, watch this, is alleviating your influence in the presentation. Let me say that again. The key to imitation is alleviating your influence in the presentation. The more we become enamored with the protagonist and central character of our faith, the more we become like him. Oh, let me say that again. The more we become enamored with the protagonist and central character of our faith, who is that? Jesus, right? The more we become like him. And we only become like him as we practice what? Imitating him. Let me cut to the chase this morning. With that, uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you another example. Some of y'all here uh, know my, my dad from um, growing up. Um, I know y'all too back there. Y'all know dad good. Now, if you would ask uh, my sisters back there about my father, and they would say that, and I remember the funeral, we had all these wonderful things said about him. They would say he's the most uh, generous and and person, he just loved people. Don't y'all agree? He loved people, he see you, he hug everybody, he do all the stuff, and he was just this wonderful, gregarious, bigger than life personality that had, you know, that had this wonderful, this huge among, among his church and all these people and all this stuff. But me and my sister and my brother, we all looked at each other like, <laughs> I don't know who they talking about. <laughs> like, because he's the it, 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 at home, and we're like, he didn't like people at all. <laughs> he, he never came outside. He never went nowhere. It, but when he gets to church, uh -huh. then he put he, he do his church, you see. Uh -huh. and, and and everybody who met him like, no, that's your dad. And people he was arguing with me at the funeral. <laughs> oh, I know your dad. He's like a father to me. I was like, no, he ain't. Did he, 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 he ever beat your butt once? <laughs> he ain't beat your butt. He ain't no father to <laughs> <laughs> He's about to us. We understand. But he, that's because I knew him. And but the problem with this, you know, they say I look a lot like him. That's what the right Patty and Sharon. They say I look a lot like him. And so if I was going to imitate him, as much as I knew about him at home, if you told me to imitate him, I'd have to do loving people. I have to do because that's who he was to everyone. I can't tell you how I can tell you a little bit more about how I believe he thought when he's home. Because the, but the, the but the the person that y'all saw, the person that the world saw, if I'm imitating him, because if I imitated who he, I thought he was at home, y'all said that ain't him. I don't recognize him at all. That's I don't know. That's you. That's and that's your personal interpretation of him. But when I saw him. And when I was, was in the prayer, he, he loves me, and he, he put his arms around me, and he did all that stuff, and if I'm not doing that, then I'm not imitating him and giving him the honor that he deserves as the person that he was publicly. Are you following what I'm saying? 
Now, see, we try to get all deep and understand the Jesus that's in heaven on the right hand of the Father. We try to get all deep and try to understand the mysteries and, and the signs and wonders, you know, because it makes us sound smart, especially us preachers. Y'all preachers always want to sound like you're more clever than everybody else in the place. Oh, I know Jesus. I understand uh, uh, the, the hermeneutics and, and the homiletics, and, and I understand the liturgies and all this stuff. And, and we have all these things that we have, and we're, we're perfect at making simple things profound to make it perfect. And that's the that's the art of preaching. It's a simple thing. God so loved the world that He gave His only got He got His Son. It takes three seconds to say that, but we take an hour and a half. But say that because we, we messed up and messed up up. By the time we finish, we're gonna say thanks. So God so loved the world. And we're like, oh, look at, I could just say that right at the top of the thing, and we would have been home by now. But that's what we do. We try to bring our point home. But the truth of the matter is that if I'm going to actually bring Christ into this place. If I'm going to actually bring Christ to my neighbors and Christ to the world, but I can't tell you what I think. I can't tell you what I surmise. I can't tell you what's in my mind, but I've got to act like Christ. And so let's step now just for a second go over what did Jesus do? Forget what you think he might have done. Forget what you think that he does in this situation, but what did he actually do? When the woman came with an issue, issue of blood, he did not stop until he said, listen, so baby, your faith has made you whole. And, and he did not hold back of uh, his anointing because she had issues. He did not stop his healing because she had issues. But instead he said, you are healed. Go and, 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 and be healed. The woman with the, with that came had had adultery. He did not say, listen, baby, you are a sinner. And there's no way you should be uh, coming to me right now. I should stone you. But he said, no, what? Go and sin no more. I don't, I don't condemn you and neither does nobody else because he will not sin. Cast the first stone. I don't understand but I do know that Jesus, uh, he stopped everything to die for me on Calvary's cross. He stopped everything to forgive my sin. All I know is that, that Jesus did what none of y'all could ever have done for me. He loved me more, even through my pain, even through my trials, even through my bad days, even through my ugly days, even through sin, even through the things I said wrong, did wrong. Oh, but God still said, I still love him. Jesus said, listen, Father, don't kill him, but that he's with me. He has my blood on him. Don't kill him, but let him live. Don't kill him, but bring him up. I'm bringing him with me. I'm his advocate. I'm the one that interceded for him. And even though he messed up all the time, even though he don't do right, even though he don't talk right, I love him so much so that I'm on his side. If that's a Jesus that I want to imitate, you're going you to be like Jesus. you got to have a love of Jesus. Yeah. 
If you want to just grab, reach out and grab it. He'll save you. He'll sanctify you. He'll wash you. Oh, yes, he will just for the asking. But you've got to warn him. And you've got to ask him. And you've got to pray to him. But then we take him when he comes. God bless you this morning. God bless you. We're so grateful to God this morning. And as we, you know, we always pause. Listen, this, this is what it's all about. It ain't about the singing, it ain't about the preaching. It's about souls coming to Christ. Man, and those of you who are watching uh, via Facebook Live, if you're not saved this afternoon now, and we've got some folks on the watch now, how many of y'all, and this is so wonderful to be able to have this connectivity that we never had had before, at least we didn't uh, access it, and we have this opportunity to reach out to the world while we're even reaching in. And we want to show you by his example how we treat folk. For this, watch this. He said, uh, if you really want to imitate me, he said, by this shall all men know you're my disciples. Because we shout, no. Because <laughs> we say down to the criminals, no. <laughs> because of because we're dead, no. How will you know that you are his disciples? He said, by the love. Wow, you have one. Right? To another. So, 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 so we got to get back to the love. Everything else pales compared to love. What is that? You could have the tongue of angels, the men of angels, right? But if you don't have love, sound the brass and take them simple. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, preachers. Yes, yes. And so we've got to go back to that. And this morning, there will be nothing worse than for me to keep going and not make an invitation right now. Yeah. But when the spirit of invitation comes, we got to stop preaching. we got to stop right there. Yeah. There's somebody that may be what, making the decision right this minute. I want Jesus. And you can talk him in and talk him out before they, you have an opportunity. So this morning, is there one that's saying, please, saying, pray for me. I want Jesus. I don't know exactly how to access him. And, but you know what? I, I'm, I'm willing to give it a try. That's all we're asking. Just give him a try. Uh, I, I guarantee you'll never regret it, but give him a try first and then come. Let's talk. As you try this, you tell me how you feel about it. But because uh, how many have tried it and would not change your mind for the world? <laughs> now, those of you who can't see that, this is the whole church full of folks say, I ain't going to change my mind. I never regret a follower of Jesus. Is there one this morning? Is there one? Thank you, Jesus. Is there one? Is there one? We'll wait. Thank you, Jesus. We really will. I'll wait. I don't have to wait. I'll wait. If you, if you don't want to cuss, we'll wait for you. And not only will we wait, I'm praying for you now. Because there's somebody in the house that, that, that wants to do this. I feel it in my spirit. Anybody else feel like there's somebody that wants to say, make a, a, a step towards Christ that they hadn't made before. And if you, that's you, don't worry. You can make it from where you sit. You know, you got to come and see me. Right? Don't follow me. <laughs> Imitate him. <laughs> Uh, you understand? So, but to the only extent that you that you do anything I do, if I if you see Christ in me at all, imitate that. Yeah. If you if you see any Christian anything, imitate that and make that part of your character. Because the more you do that, make it part of your character, you're making it like him. God bless you. Did not want. Is it one of these prayers this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Of any form for healing, for 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 for, for help, for finances for whatever may be. We have a God that covers all the gamut. There's nothing you can't do. Isn't that wonderful? So we don't have to list, because the list be inexhaustible. <laughs> There's nothing you can't do. So whatever you're going through, it's on the list. Yeah. Hallelujah. Whatever pain you got, wait, wait, there it is. It's on the list. <laughs> There's nothing on this list that you're going through. These things are common to man. But isn't it wonderful to know that you have an uncommon sin? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to pray this morning for you. We're going to pray for you. Thank you, Jesus. That Jesus Christ is in the smile of us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for Jesus. Let's get in a prayerful frame of mind. He is Lord. He is Lord. Come on. Is he Lord of your life this morning? Hallelujah. Lord of your affairs. Hallelujah. Lord, thank you, Jesus. Of your attitude, Lord, of your character, my goodness. Lord, of your lips, the 
your mind, your heart, spirit, and soul is he going to walk? Yes, Lord, he Take over us, our minds, our thoughts, our minds, everything, Lord, and let us come under subjection to you and you all. We ask now, Lord, that you will address each and every petition, because they're petitioning you, not us, not the church, but you, you alone. And we're so grateful to know that we have a God that hears and listens and cares and has prepared the way for us. And we're just, Lord, asking for strength to endure strength to trust and believe. Faith! Oh God, thank you. Let us go from faith to faith. That our faith increases and grows and that we hold on and never let go. But instead, oh God, thank you, Jesus, do more and more because you, thank you, Jesus, have ordained it in our lives that we live in purpose, on purpose, with purpose, Lord. That the only thing that we live is to see your kingdom come and your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. For this is our charge. This is our hope. This is our faith. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You got anybody believe God's dealing with your situation right now? Amen. Amen.